Hello and welcome to this video on social efficiency. In this video, I'm going to somewhat compare Franklin Bobbitt's scientific method in curriculum making, or at least the ideas um, that he proposes in that article, to Thomas Fauci and Victoria Fantosi's Was There Really a Social Efficiency Doctrine? In their article, Was There Really a Social Efficiency Doctrine? the uses and abuses of an idea in educational history. Fallacy and Fantosi look back at the history of curriculum and explore the ideology of social efficiency. Their article explores the debate around social efficiency by looking at the rise of it as an idea for curriculum, some common assertions on which it was based, and some recent challenges to these assertions. And they also talk about how they feel like the term should be viewed. According to Fauci and Fantosi, social efficiency helps schools in the post-industrial workforce, in the mobilization of school for international competition and cultivation of workforce. Fauci and Fantosi do view the social efficiency doctrine in the same way that Franklin Bobbitt discusses it. Bobbitt sees social efficiency in terms of training students to meet the needs of the nation or the society. So in order to do this, Bobbitt saw the need for a school curriculum that would prepare students for specific jobs and citizenship roles. Bobbitt says there is a need for a curriculum that can be used to take human experiences along with specific activities and prepare students for their adult work uh, and citizenship roles. Here in this quote, Bobbitt discusses how human life, however varied, consists of the performance of specific activities. An education that prepares for life is one that prepares definitely and adequately for these specific activities. According to Bobbitt, education is based on experiences, direct training, and undirected training. Bobbitt was really the first American educator to advance the case for identifying objectives as a starting point for curriculum. He used this scientific approach to curriculum making to kind of serve as a model for a lot of educators that came after him or during the first half of the 20th century to design a course of study. Bobbitt, along with other educators, made a case that curriculum should be differentiated into numerous programs, some academic, other preparatory, and other vocational, so that students could be channeled into tracks based on their abilities. Again, the idea of students coming in with certain experiences. Finally, Bobbitt uh, was one of the first of the social control or regulation for addressing the problems of modern society. In other words, Bobbitt felt like that through experiences, indirect and direct training, students could be molded into adults that would be prepared for a particular workforce, particular job, and citizenship role. He saw the task of schools as that of instilling in use the skills, knowledge, and beliefs that would be required of them to function in an urban, industrial, an increasingly heterogeneous society that America was becoming during the early 20, 20th century. Fauci and Fantosi argued that the term social efficiency had been applied too bluntly. Otherwise, it had been widely used. It wasn't defined correctly. And that scholars between 1890s and the 1930s had used it for different purposes. Instead, they argued that the term, which had commonly been associated with scientific curriculum making, needed to be updated, and the curriculum goals of social efficiency needed to be more consistent with the goals that were stated by theorists such as Bobbitt. After reading the works of all of these authors, I come to determine that there is a need in our curriculum of our schools today to meet the needs of, uh, of our society and our nation. Based this idea on uh, things that I noticed happening in the uh, late 
mid to late 20th century and on into the 21st century. Well, I don't think that this particular idea of curriculum needs to um, exist in a silo or in isolation. I do think that it does play a role in what our schools, particularly our public schools, um, have a role in, in doing. So school or curriculum needs to be designed to help us meet the needs of our nation and our society. And this concept has been called into play, as I stated, throughout the 20, 20th and now into the 21st century. I'm going to talk about these three different aspects of um, social efficiency in our public schools. Um, the first one that I'll talk about is the Soviet launch of the Sputnik, and then the report, A Nation at Risk, and finally, in modern times, STEM education. So in October uh, of 1957, the Soviet Union launched the world's first man-made satellite. It was called Sputnik 1. And to the surprise um, of the United States, it really uh, triggered um, a, a huge debate in what we were doing in our military, in, in politics, in our policies, and in education. And basically, um, it prompted uh, science-oriented educational reform. In this reform, in this educational reform, the American citizens were called upon to basically wake up from our complacency and um, to come to arms to prepare our students to be more technological, uh, more science-oriented, uh, and to work towards a, an educational superiority. This was basically a call uh, in the 1960s and on into the 70s for for a, a more science-based education in math and science. And we were trying to get uh, a man on the moon, which we did accomplish. And I kind of um, uh, attribute all of that to the fact that we called on that social efficiency doctrine to um, ignite our educational system to work towards those goals. Then in 1983, there was a report put out by the Reagan administration. It was called A Nation at Risk, and it described how America's educational system was failing to educate our students, um, at least failing to educate them as well as it should be. Um, but that report really called into play the fact that we were no longer the leader in commerce, in industry, in science, and technology, and that we were being overtaken by um Competitors, In particular, I think um, Reagan was still focused on the Soviet Union, but uh, other competitors such as China and Japan were uh, beginning to uh, overtake America's technological innovation and become leaders in commerce. So, among other things, this report made recommendations that schools become more rigorous, adopt new standards, and that teacher preparation and pay be evaluated so that we could move our nation away from this at-risk status and, and again become uh, world leaders in technology and in industry and commerce. Then in the 21st century, in a 2011 State of the Union address, President Barack Obama told Congress and the country, this is our generation Sputnik moment. It was his call for the United States to ramp up technological innovation to stay competitive with other nations, to spur economic growth, to preserve our national security, and to propel ingenuity. Again, calling on that social efficiency doctrine to drive America's schools to prepare and to excel above all other nations. So I do feel like the social efficiency doctrine does have some importance even in today's educational system. Um, I think it's important because it introduces another idea of what the purpose of education is. Of course, for Bobbitt and other educators, social efficiency is training that student population to meet the needs of society or the nation. Of course, when we take a look at what uh, Fauci and Fantosi said, they basically said, you know, maybe we were overgeneralizing and social efficiency wasn't really as responsible for everything in the progressive uh, movement that 
um, some authors had said, and they pointed out how it had kind of been overused, it was overgeneralized, and maybe it needed to be refocused on what it was really about. And I do think the main purpose of the social efficiency ideology was that we need curriculum in our schools to meet the needs of our society and our nation. A school or curriculum needs to be designed to help us meet the needs of our nation to prepare enough engineers, scientists, and technologists. And today that focus comes back to play with STEM education. So whether it was, um, you know, competing with the Soviet Union to in the space race or our concern about a nation at risk in the 80s, even to today where we're um, competing against such global giants as China, I believe social efficiency is still very much at work in our schools and in our curriculum. Thank you for watching and I look forward to your comments.